Vladimir Putin on Tucker Carlson's interview not only gave an immense wealth of knowledge on his, the history of Ukraine, of Russia, of the current conflict, of NATO expansion, on and on and on. But Vladimir Putin also demonstrated that he understands and is able to articulate very clearly the geopolitical dimensions of this multipolar world that is fast and rapidly developing as we speak and why it is important to uh, go and target the financial dimensions of the warfare that we are witnessing when it comes to the United States, of course, the neocons, the collective West, their attempt to maintain hegemony and to break up Russia because Vladimir Putin was very clear that the aim here is to break up Russia. Well, not only is Putin and Russia destroying any attempts for that to be successful, but in this victorious effort in Ukraine, Russia has also become a leader in the multipolar world in ways that could not have been predicted otherwise. It has become an engine, and it already was an engine, but it's become a revved up engine, one that has these immense possibilities for leadership in the de-dollarization process and the transition away from a unipolar world led by the United States to a multipolar one. So here's Rachel Blevins, great journalist. Everyone should follow Rachel Blevins. Um, she posted this clip of what Vladimir Putin had to say about the state of the dollar of U.S. economic hegemony and how it all relates to this agenda to destabilize Russia. So here we go. You know, to use the dollar as a tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the U.S. political leadership. The dollar is the cornerstone of the United States power. I think everyone understands very well that no matter how many dollars are printed, they are quickly dispersed all over the world. Inflation in the United States is minimal. It's about 3 or 3.4 percent, which is, I think, totally acceptable for the U.S. I do appreciate Tucker Carlson's face when Vladimir Putin says inflation is minimal because I think that face is an acknowledgement that prices are just really high in the United States. Of course, it's been politicized to some degree, but it is true. Inflation is absolutely rampant in the U.S. It's just that it's normalized and that these high prices don't really come down at all once they go up. But they won't stop printing. What does the debt of $33 trillion tell us about? It is about the emission. Nevertheless, it is the main weapon used by the United States to preserve its power across the world. As soon as the political leadership decided to use the U.S. dollar as a tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to this American power. I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do. I wouldn't like to use strong language, but you're stupid. This is this is dumb. I mean, I, I thought that was a great way of putting it, that this is just, it's not intelligent. But uh, to, on the contrary, Vladimir Putin, too, while I, I think he's giving a very astute analysis, it could be added that it's not about intelligence or being stupid or dumb for these people, for the ruling circle in the United States for the neocons, for the political establishment and the economic elites that control them. It's not about smart or stupid or even the future of their system. It's about their ability to make as much money, as much profits, and to get rid of anyone in their way as fast as possible. And that's what they believe they are doing when it comes to sanctioning Russia, when it comes to sanctions all over the world. When it comes to all of these policies of aggression, that's what they believe they're doing. And Vladimir Putin understands this. He's about to get into it. And a grave mistake. 
Look at what is going on in the world. Even the United States allies are now downsizing their dollar reserves. Seeing this, everyone starts looking for ways to protect themselves. He's specifically talking about countries like Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, countries that are fast developing alternative means of currency swaps and other ways to bypass the U.S. dollar, especially with China and with Russia. That's that's exactly who we talking about, even India as well. But the fact that the United States applies restrictive measures to certain countries, such as placing restrictions on transactions, freezing assets, etc., causes great concern and sends a signal to the whole world. What did we have here? Until 2022, about 80% of Russian foreign trade transactions were made in US dollars and euros. US dollars accounted for approximately 50% of our transactions with third countries. While currently it is down to 13%. It wasn't us who banned the use of the US dollar. We had no such intention. It was decision of the United States to restrict our transactions in US dollars. I think it is complete foolishness from the point of view of the interests of the United States itself and its taxpayers, as it damages the US economy, undermines the power of the United States across the world. By the way, our transactions in Yuan accounted for about 3%. Today, 34% of our transactions are made in rubles and about as much, a little over 34% in yuan. So what he's saying here is that allies are moving away from the U.S. dollar. Russia has had to move away from the U.S. dollar. And guess who the biggest winners are? China, BRICS, Russia itself. That They have not been the ones to falter here it's the united states that's in europe that's shooting themselves in the foot this has been the case since the very beginning of this massive sanctions campaign why did the united states do this my only guess is self-conceit they probably thought it would lead to full collapse but nothing collapsed moreover other countries including oil producers are thinking of and already accepting payments for oil in yuan do you even realize what is going on or not? Does anyone in the United States realize this? What are you doing? You are cutting yourself off. All experts say this. Ask any intelligent and thinking person in the United States what the dollar means for the US. But you're killing it with your own hands. You're killing it with your own hands by cutting off the Russian market, by pushing countries, attempting to push countries away from the Russian market and the Chinese market. We're going to get into that. The United States and Europe are killing themselves with their own hands. They're murdering them. So their, their economies, their massive, monopolistic, uh, uh, imperial, capital intensive, capital intensive, capitalist intensive economies are being killed by restrictions that they are imposing on themselves on their so-called dominant currencies and russia has only gained china has only gained and BRICS has only gained that is the point that putin was making that is a hundred percent true and what's so interesting about this is that oftentimes you'll see russia and china together putin china putin she russia china and it's a hundred percent valid there's, of course, a lot of demonization that goes on in the halls of the warmongers and in their various channels of information, misinformation, information, whatever you want to call it. They often put them together. And Vladimir Putin had a lot to say about this because Tucker Carlson himself, I don't know what people might be thinking about this, but it was my opinion that Tucker Carlson went into this interview hoping to save face with certain elements of his audience around the question of China by dividing Russia from China as Russia is the strong one that the U.S. and the West have a problem with. China is strong, but the United States is canoodling and conspiring with 
China. Um, Russia is a good country. China is a bad country. And this is something that Tucker Carlson has done for much of his career. Uh, not in, not with the Russia. The, the Russia is new. The Russia angle is new. But this is something that there are elements of uh, a broad uh, range of forces, especially in the establishment, they think that driving a wedge between Russia and China is possible and actually is the correct strategy. So throughout the interview, we had these instances. So before we get back to uh, what, Tar what Tar Carlson is about to ask and that follow-up question about BRICS and sanctions, here is what uh, Tucker Carlson asked at almost at the very beginning of the interview with regard to China. Why does the United States have a problem with Russia, but not China? This is what Vladimir Putin had to say. Explain why you think that happened, except to say that the West fears a strong Russia, but we have a strong China the West does not seem very afraid of. This is interesting because Tucker Carlson is making a clear political point. He's saying that in his opinion, the United States is not afraid of a strong China, but is afraid of a strong Russia. So we're going to hear what Vladimir Putin has to say. Uh, what about Russia do you think convinced policymakers they had to take it down? Okay. The West is afraid of strong China more than it fears a strong Russia. Because Russia has 150 million people and China has 1.5 billion population. So right away, Vladimir Putin said, no, this is about China. This is about both of us. They fear a strong China more. A lot of times, especially people who believe Russia is enemy number one, which it is. I believe it's enemy number one and 1A. And I don't even separate the two anymore in terms of how the United States, how NATO is going about its business in terms of trying to maintain U.S. hegemony. I don't separate them so much. But right away, Putin said, no, China is a strong China is feared even more. That's a huge statement for Vladimir Putin to make. And he's going to elaborate on why this is. It's not just population, as he's outlining here. And its economy is growing by leaps and bounds or 5% a year. It used to be even more. But that's enough for China. As Bismarck once put it, potentials are the most important. China's potential is enormous. It is the biggest economy in the world today in terms of purchasing power parity and the size of the economy. It has already overtaken the United States quite a long time ago, and it is growing at a rapid clip. Let's not talk about who is afraid of whom. Let's not reason in such terms. And let's get into the fact that after 1991, when Russia expected that it would be welcomed into the brotherly family of civilized nations, nothing like this happened. You tricked us. I don't mean you personally when I say you. Of course, I'm talking about the United States. The promise was that NATO would not expand eastward. But it happened five times. There were five waves of expansion. We tolerated all that. We were trying to persuade them. We were saying, please don't. We are as bourgeois now as you are. We are market economy and there is no communist party power. Let so essentially, China is, has amazing potential. Its economy is growing and it is feared by the United States and the West. That's what Putin said. And that's because Russia and China hold a massive partnership. And of course, as a leader of Russia, it is much more clear to someone like Vladimir Putin exactly what's going on when in the collective West, you have essentially people uh, uh, operating, these leaders, these rulers, they're operating with only ideological aims in mind, only ideological talking points meant to satisfy uh, an increased aggression toward China. So. Vladimir Putin is saying Russia and China. China is a huge power. China is significant. And here's what Tucker Carlson, in following up on the on the topic of sanctions, here is how he characterized uh, China in BRICS, a very sly and slick attempt to, again, divide Russia and China, Putin and Xi from each other. 
And Putin absolutely eviscerates this question. Here we go. I think it's a fair assessment. The question is what comes next. And maybe you trade one colonial power for another much less sentimental and forgiving colonial power. I mean, are, is the, the, the BRICS, for example. One colonial power for another. One, that's how he's characterizing China versus the United States. In danger of being completely dominated by the Chinese, the Chinese economy uh, in a way that's not good for their sovereignty. Is BRICS in danger of being dominated by the Chinese economy in ways that's not good for their sovereignty? Mind you, BRICS is a bunch of countries, right? Now it's 10 countries. Uh, was, of course, five, uh, Russia, China, India, South Africa, and Brazil. Now it is 10, uh, you know, with the major Middle East oil producers now in it, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, Egypt and Africa, Ethiopia. Um, you know, sovereignty, though, it's an interesting, interesting question. Here's how Vladimir Putin answered it, because what this is saying is that China is adversarial. Do you worry about that? Well, we have heard those boogeyman stories before. It is a boogeyman story. <laughs> I mean, that is a perfect answer. It's a boogeyman story. China is not looked at as a villain to BRICS countries. If it were, why would any of these countries even think about joining? It, 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 it doesn't really make any sense at all but of course in the mind of tucker carlson the agenda here is to divide the two vladimir putin continuously reaffirms that there is no divide here that china and russia and BRICS are all united on very key aspects of how to develop not only this institution but also how to expand the concept of sovereignty beyond the narrow vision of the collective West, the so-called rules-based order. We're neighbors with China. You cannot choose neighbors just as you cannot choose close relatives. We share a border of 1,000 kilometers with them. This is number one. Second, we have a centuries-long history of coexistence. We're used to it. Third, China's foreign policy philosophy is not aggressive. Its idea is to always look for compromise, and we can see that. China's foreign policy is not aggressive. It's always looking for compromise, and we can see that. That's a very strong message. Vladimir Putin is saying China and Russia have big similarities in terms of how they do foreign policy. We can see the utility of China's foreign policy. We don't have a problem with China. The next point is as follows. We are always told the same boogeyman story, and here it goes again, through an euphemistic form, but it is still the same boogeyman story. The cooperation with China keeps increasing. The pace at which China's cooperation with Europe is growing is higher and greater than that of the growth of Chinese-Russian cooperation. Ask Europeans, aren't they afraid? They might be, I don't know. But they are still trying to access China's market at all costs, especially now that they are facing economic problems. Chinese businesses are also exploring the European market. Do Chinese businesses have small presence in the United States? Yes, the political decisions are such that they are trying to limit their cooperation with China. It is to your own detriment, Mr. Tucker, that you are limiting cooperation with China. You are hurting yourself. There he is again, Vladimir Putin referring the United States to Tucker Carlson that you are hurting yourself. And I think that was intentional because the question itself insinuating, insinuated that it would be in the best interest of BRICS to not do dealings with China, which Vladimir Putin has demonstrated is absolutely ridiculous. It has no basis in reality. But he's now attaching Tucker Carlson to this larger policy, not because he is making a direct connection. He's not saying that Tucker Carlson is the U.S. government or is the United States economy. But what he is saying is that what he was asking reflects that dominant trend and worldview, which is detrimental to the United States and, of course, the rest of the collective West, which is uh, going through a process of uh, suicidal decoupling that is impossible in form uh, as it is in substance. So here we go. It is a delicate matter, and there are no silver bullet solutions, just as it is with the dollar. 
So before introducing any illegitimate sanctions, illegitimate in terms of the Charter of the United Nations, one should think very carefully. For decision makers, this appears to be a problem. So he said, think carefully about what you do with China. Think what you want, think what you will, says Vladimir Putin. But the reality is, is that if you decouple from China, goodbye. See you later. You're, you're gone. You're done. And Vladimir Putin recognizes this. And he said very clearly that Russia does not view China in any adversarial way, nor does the rest of BRICS. And so I thought that was just a very good, very clear re response to this attempt. And this is a dominant trend now. Russia, of course, I've, I have been supporting all efforts to de-escalate with Russia, to acknowledge Russia's rising role in the world, to understand Russia better. So as I would with any other country that is under fire from U.S. and NATO pressure to understand Russia better so that people will be more amenable and agreeable to peace all across the collective West. That is key. I've done it with Syria. I did it with Libya. I did it everywhere where there's been an attempt to destroy and overthrow a government that the United States doesn't like. This is the task. China as well. China has become, of course, a key focus for me, but also it needs to be a key focus everywhere. And the great thing about this interview is that Vladimir Putin shows that him and Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Xi Jinping, China, are in a very strong partnership, very strong. He describes in this interview how they surpassed $200 billion in US, U.S. dollars in trade, and it's only going to go up, and that the relationship is complementary and mutual, meaning that China shares its advances with Russia. Russia shares what it has with China that China doesn't have, and that these two countries are moving forward along a similar path of increasing prosperity and alignment in a broader vision for a multipolar world. That is the huge uh, development happening around the world. And that is what Vladimir Putin was able to articulate so clearly in this interview to someone, Tucker Carlson. Who I don't believe Tucker Carlson understands this phenomenon. I don't think he agrees with it. I think Tucker Carlson would much rather have, and I'll applaud him for wanting a peace with Russia. But I do believe that if the cards were stacked in a particular direction, that Tucker Carlson would be on the side of war with China. It just so happens that the United States cannot wage that war. The United States is in too vulnerable a position because of how it's mired itself in Ukraine. And Ukraine has offered itself up for a more uh, 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 palatable political discussion amongst folks like Tucker Carlson. And I will give credit where credit is due. That's a good thing. Tucker Carlson going to Moscow, interviewing Vladimir Putin, uh, uh, promoting a message of uh, getting the U.S. out of Ukraine. I agree with that. But when it comes to these bigger questions, Putin, there's no competition. He is able to, he would probably do this with most people in the world, not just someone like Harker Carlson, who is far flung from these developments. But Vladimir Putin is someone who understands because he's at the forefront of this movement, of this development, exactly what is going on. And he was not going to be deterred. He was not going to mince words and he was not going to allow China to be dragged. What Putin and Xi Jinping, what China and Russia are doing is actually changing everything about this world order that we live under. They are the new superpowers, quote unquote, but superpowers without the aims or interests of superpowers, meaning that they just want to be part of a family of nations. They want to adhere and follow the UN charter. That's why Putin brought this up many times in the interview, UN charter, UN charter, UN charter. Why? Because that is where Russia wants, that's what Russia wants to follow. That's what China wants to follow. And if they are allowed to do that and other countries are allowed to do that, then the global south will stand to win. That is the point of all of this, to, for everybody to win.
for all countries, the poorest of them, to win because China and Russia knows what that is like. They know what it's like to be on the bottom. Now they are rising. Now they are world powers. Now they have the light shown on them because the United States is on the decline. The United States is on its way out and it is trying to do everything it can to wrestle control of what it has left and it's not working. And Tucker Carlson's interview offered a snapshot into what a leader who is in a position of momentum, a position of a, a truly transformational movement and trend of multipolarity, uh, what that kind of leader looks like, what that kind of leader believes, and how we can learn from it. And Vladimir Putin certainly put on a show in that regard. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I appreciate all of your support. This channel, however, needs your help. I am seeking to make this channel more sustainable in the long term and upgrade necessary equipment to ensure that this work continues onward and makes progress to give you all of the geopolitical analysis that you all deserve. For that reason, I'm asking you to become a member of my Patreon community at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. You can find that link in the video description or in the pinned comment below. For whatever amount you choose to give, just know you are supporting independent media that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the next video.